Hello AP Calculus PC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and we are going to begin with an introductory video uh, to a unit that I like to call Unit 6-BC. Again, this is a revisit to Unit 6 from Calculus AB, but we're now going to basically cover all of those BC topics that you didn't necessarily cover in an AB course. And then in addition with this particular unit, we're going to add on a few extra integration techniques to round this unit out um, and really get it to have sort of the sense of what a true Calculus II course would look like at the, at the college level. But for our very first part of this unit, I call it Topic Six Point Review. See, I don't even have a number for it because what this really is is about going back to AB and focusing on all of the integration techniques that we learned, packaging them all together, practicing them, getting comfortable with them so that we can then sort of expand our horizons and learn some of these new integration techniques. So from the notes packet that I use here at Avon High School, it, it starts off with a, a, a right side column of several formulas. So if we just kind of scroll down, and focus on that gray box, we see that there are 20 different integration formulas. And for my particular students, I want you to be very comfortable with all 20 of these formulas. At one point last year, you were probably very comfortable with many of them in isolation. Now we just need to make sure that we put them all together. Just start from the top, look through them. Many of them you're already going to know, but try to add to your arsenal of your memorization. Um, as you move through this particular unit each day. And if you want to make flashcards for these, that certainly could be a, a benefit, whether they're in electronic form or actual physical form, but just do whatever it takes to get more comfortable with these. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our first example, uh, fitting integrands to basic integration rules. And I, I basically have three very similar integrals, as you can see. The only thing that varies is really uh, the presence or lack of an x value in the numerator. And then finally for part c, we have a squared x. And it's amazing how that subtle change completely dictates the technique by which you guys would integrate each one of these. So let's take a look at our first one. Integration of 4 over x squared plus 9. Now this one doesn't require a whole heck of a lot of work. In fact, it is an instantly recognizable form. It does not require any sophisticated u substitution or anything of that variety. So if we were to kind of look down our basic integration rules, <coughs> excuse me, and think about which of the following that this would comply with, and the answer is number 19. This is an arctangent form where all we need to do is recognize what A and U are, and then just basically use our formula. So if I really wanted to break this down, I might start it off by saying that the U squared value is the same as the X squared, and the A squared value is the 9. Well, that's going to force our U to be X, and our A to be 3. Good morning, so in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and use our formula. So let's go ahead and take a look at that formula one more time. I scroll down to 19, and I see that the formula consists of a 1 over a arctan u over a plus c. Well, one of the things that we have to do any time that a u substitution is made in any shape is take its derivative just to verify that the du and dx are either interchangeable or whether or not we need to offset with a particular constant. Here we see that they are indeed equivalent and thus interchangeable. And so the only thing left to do right now is to write the answer. I often say that to my students when they get to this step. They'll be, I don't know where to go from here. And there really is nowhere to go but to write the answer. And so we have 1 over a and then arctan of u over a according to your formula. The u is x, the a again is 3, and then don't forget your constant of integration. And that's all that you'd have to do. Now let's move on to part B. How does the presence of an x in the numerator affect the problem? Well, now you're going to revisit a little bit more, um, I, I guess, commonly used integration technique. The fact that you have a denominator x squared plus 9 
whose derivative is going to match pretty closely the numerator means that this is going to be a u substitution. And so you're going to let u equal that denominator. Now, you're going to have to look for things like that. You're going to have to be very conscious of the fact that the derivative of the denominator does come close to matching the numerator, and that's going to give you the sort of green light, if you will, to do this u substitution. So the derivative of this u, of course, is 2x times dx. Now, we, we look at this integrand and we think, oh, we really wanted a 4x, but we ended up getting a 2x. Well, a couple of different ways you can think about that. One of the things that I like to do is to take that constant 4 that was there and just bring it out in front regardless. Okay. Now, I like to think of the fact that x dx is what I really need my du to match. But unfortunately, my du has this stray 2 in there. So if I want to swap out x dx for du, I'm going to have a problem because my du is twice as big. And so in class, we talked about fixing that <clears throat> by simply multiplying by the reciprocal of that constant. Right? We often use the word at Avon High School, offset. Offset with the reciprocal over 2. And if you do that, now you have a situation where you can put your du in place of this x dx because the 2 that would be a part of this is now canceled away with this 2. And then, of course, the denominator is just u. And then I hope that we recognize this as a fairly popular integration formula. And if we look through our table, we see that it's going to be number 5 right there. So I don't even have to scroll down. And so we know that this is the natural log of the absolute value of u. So if I continue with this, I have 2 times natural log absolute value of u. Don't forget your plus c. And then, of course, we're always going to need to back substitute. And so I'm going to replace my u with x squared plus 9. I'll leave it to you guys if you want to keep the absolute values around the x squared plus 9. But please know that it is not necessary because x squared plus 9 is always going to take on positive values no matter what x is. But it's perfectly acceptable to leave the absolute values around it. And there's your answer for part B. All right, let's go on to our final one, part C. This one's probably going to be the trickiest of the three. And if I can get students to really buy into the fact that there is something that you have to do with problems of this variety from the very get-go, it might make the integration process easier. And that process is recognize that the degree on top and the bottom are either the same or the degree on top is higher. And if any time you have that situation, you're always going to be able to use division. So we have to go about using polynomial long division. Sometimes polynomial long division gets this bad rap. Students think that it's so difficult to do, but it's actually not too bad. In this particular problem, you're going to take your 4x squared and you're going to divide it by the denominator x squared plus 9. Now you're only going to be able to divide one time. x squared goes into 4x squared four times. When you do the multiplication, you have 4x squared plus 36. And then, of course, we have to subtract. That's what we do with the division problem. And we end up with negative 36. That's acting as our remainder. So really, this quotient is 4 minus that remainder over the divisor x squared plus 9. So instead of integrating the original problem, instead let's go about integrating 4 minus 36 over x squared plus 9. Now things are starting to come into focus because the antiderivative of 4 is pretty straightforward, right? That's just your 4 times x. And then the antiderivative of this 36 over x squared plus 9 ought to look a bit familiar because it's the exact same technique that we did in part A. The only difference is there's a 36 constant that's in front. And then remember, our A value would be 3. And we know that we have to use 1 over A in our answer for this arctangent form. And then, of course, we have arctangent 
and then the u is going to be x. Take note that if u is equal to x, du is equal to dx, and everything's good there. And really there's not much to do with this problem other than to maybe reduce the 36 and the 3 if you'd like. And you could have something like this as your final answer. Now, I've taken a, a second here to pre-enter these three integrals into the TI Inspire CX2 CAS calculator to show you that we do get the same answer. So I'm going to pull those up now. But before I do, I'd noticed a small error that I made in Part A that I want to go back and talk about. This 4 numerator I never did address. And so I'm going to go ahead and throw that in right here, if you don't mind. I'll even use the same color. So I should have a 4 thirds there. What well, made me remember that was the fact that there was a 36 in this green problem. So I'm sorry that uh, you were kind of maybe holding on to that particular error and um, it wasn't quite addressed. But at least now we know that they're correct. Now let's take a look at the TI Inspire graphing calculator. Well, here we go. You'll notice that all three of these have been entered uh, in the same order in which they appeared on the document. And if you look very carefully and cross-reference these answers with what you have on paper, they line up pretty nicely. Even that four that I had forgotten initially in Part A. Uh, the only thing that you might want to take note of in, in is Part C. It is uh, presented in a little unusual manner. They factor out the negative four. But if you were to distribute this back in, it does start with the positive 4x that we would have, and then minus 12 times the arctangent of x over 3. And of course, you never will expect to find plus c after a definite integral, indefinite integral's answer on the TI Inspire. Sometimes, the TI Inspire will give you an answer that looks quite different from the problem that you've solved and the answer that you've gotten on paper. We're going to talk about that with some future examples and ways that you can kind of depict whether or not your solution does still match the calculator's answer. And so um, stay tuned for that in some future videos. But for now, we hope this certainly helps at least with example one. We have several more examples to bring you from this topic six-point review, so stick around for those, and we'll see you next time.